YouTube and everybody else watching. Jacob and Kyle out there with the pool spot. Today, we have a clear comfort system. There's a lot more to it than this, but you'll find out. Stay tuned and we are gonna show you how to install this entire system front to back, side to side, the whole nine. Stay tuned. All right, and we're back guys. So first things first, hit that like, hit that subscribe, help us out, follow our channel, more installation videos like this. You're gonna love them. We have a ton more co content coming your ways. Also, we have a website, epoolsupply.com. You can actually buy everything you're seeing here today on the site, get it shipped pretty fast to you guys. So now let's dive into this. So we have our pool equipment set here. It's a pretty basic pool equipment set. Um, so when you start cutting pipes, mess with electrical, the very, very first thing you wanna do is kill power to this entire system at the breaker source. You don't wanna just turn off the switch. You don't want this thing turning on. You don't wanna get electrocuted. It says 240 volts of power coming through here. It'll hurt a lot, especially if you're wet. So first things first, let's get up. Let's go turn the power off. All right, guys, the first things you wanna do is make sure that you turn the power off here. So open up this electrical panel. And what you're gonna to wanna to do, you're gonna find pool filter pump. And I'm also gonna do the pool light GFI because all the power goes in that one central area. I'm gonna kill them both. And then now we can go back over there and get to work. All right, guys, so we're uh, back from turn off the power. So now what we're going to do, the very first step, I like to plumb this thing in here and kind of get the foundation of our plumbing set because when you do the electrical, it's a good time for the plumbing to set, the, the glue to set because they do require anywhere between five to 30 minutes on set time for the plumbing uh, glue, depending on how hot or how cold it is today. Today is a real uh, a light breeze of 100 degrees here in Arizona, so bear with me. I might be drenched by the time we're done with this video. Hopefully not because that's kind of embarrassing. Um, so what we're going to do first is obviously I did turn the power off to test that. You obviously can hear your pump, open the air relief, water is not popping out of your filter. My power is off. We're not flowing anything. Um, installing this bad boy. So you guys might be seeing like, why am I not installing this down here on the outlet of the filter? So this pool actually has a pool heater. You can't see it. It's kind of like around the corner. Uh, Clear Comfort recommends that we install these after the pool heater. So we're going to install this thing right here after the pool heater. To jump into a little bit about what a clear comfort is, what this thing is, is that it injects hydroxyl into your, your swimming pool water. So hydroxyl, what that is, we're gonna pop up a pop-up of a definition of what hydroxyl is right here on the screen for you. Our web designer, Danny, loves doing this, loves doing pop-ups, takes them two seconds. So here it is, here's the hydroxyl. So now that we've established what a hydroxyl is, uh, ultimately what this does, this lowers your chlorine inside your pool to literally half part per million to one part per million. So virtually none, but they do have to acquire a little bit of chlorine inside of here. Uh, ultimately, there's a lot of other systems out there that like to explain like, hey, we create the hydroxyl effect and everything of that sort. You have to get usually a combo unit of a UV and an ozone. But this is nice because it is a consolidated unit built into one little aspect and it actually has more than these competitors do. So this thing is a pretty beefy system. Doesn't look like it, but it actually really, really helps keep all contaminants out of your water. It kills the stuff that chlorine can't kill unless your chlorine levels are so elevated that it's unslowable. So it's really kind of neat. Um, this is the future of the entire pool industry. They make these for swimming pools up to unlimited amount of gallons. So if for some reason you've got a sweet house that has a 200,000 gallon pool, they've got a system for you. It's gonna be quite a bit of money, but they got a system for you. Um, and then if you have a, they even have above ground spa stuff now. So if you have an above ground spa, they've got a, a spa system for you. Again, all available purchase on our website. So let's start cutting the pipes. Let's start getting this thing on. First things first is how the heck do I know which way this goes? They decided to put all fancy arrows across the plumbing for you. So that means water flow. Water goes in through here, back out here to the system. So pretty much I'm gonna try to plumb it in about yay, okay? So. Let's put this off the side. Let's start cutting. Maybe a good blade would help. That's a really crooked cut. 
<laughs> All right. So what I do now is I got a nice open gap so I can start plumbing this thing on, um, kind of get crafty with it. Let me straighten out my cut a little bit. I know a lot of pipe police like to watch my videos, so I'll make it straight as possible. Yay. Again, my arrows are going this way. I want to go from here to here, from here to here. So let's try to get crafty on how I want to do this. Well, like I said, it's 100 degrees outside. Our camera failed. Uh, so now we're on camera B and C. B, C, B, C, B, C, B, C. Okay, cool. So I'm going to glue this together before we start overheating these cameras. So I cleaned all my pipes. So what I want to do is clean this one and then glue this one. Glue these together. Glue this one. Glue this one. Glue it together. Pop it up underneath where I'm going to go. Sweet. So now I'm going to do, like I said, the inside of this pipe where these two meet is my, my cut joint. So I'm going to cut right there. Dominoes. Take one more 90. Clean off all my pipes. The beauty about PVC, it still kind of bends a little bit. So how these two pipes are touching is exactly what you want right in the corners. Glue both sides of this. So what you want to do is, again, how it kind of bends a little bit. I'm going to lift up gently on here, push out on here. Yeah, let's lift up on this one first. Put that on. Slide that one on. I'm going to pull. <clears throat> push. <sighs> we are on. We are glued. I'm done gluing. So now what we're going to do is we are going to cut and we're going to go work on the electrical. So, hi guys, we're back. I'm hot and sweating, so let's finish this up. What we're going to do, we're putting the electric in for this clear comfort system. Okay, first things first, I'm grabbing my orange guy. That's what I'm going to hook up first, okay? We have, don't do it upside down, Jacob. This is how you want to hang this one. This one goes on the left side, okay? It is, di it is directional. You'll see these little pins down here. That's how the other one locks in as well. Uh, first things first, I'm going to hang my top screw. I got super lucky at this job site because something was already here. So I'm going to steal the screw that was already on the wall. You are going to want to drill so you can drill, put anchors in. And I'm going to show you that on all the rest of the stuff that I got to do because we have to do three more holes on top of this guy. So, but this is my foundation. This is the one you're going to want to probably do first. So then you can level everything out. You guys get a level, please level it out. Make your work look good. Okay. So right now, see my levels here. Whoever did this didn't use a the level. They eyeballed it. I'm going to level this guy off. And I'm going to drill in my bottom hole. So. All right. So orange guys in that's the power pack so now what i'm going to want to do take my blue one so like i said before it's got these two tabs on here it slides right into here so what i can do is match this up and that's how it wants to sit the whole time okay so now what i'm going to do is take my screwdriver mark where these holes are going to go take this thing back off the wall And then the bottom one, there. Cool. All right. There we go. There we go. Let's put this on here. Put it down. I'm way off. That's exciting. Yeah, you are. All right, cool. Um, 
Come on, grab the anchor. Okay. All right, so we are golden, my friends. We are secured. We're not going anywhere. So now my idea here is I want to get these wires into this box. All right. So this thing is if you read the wires too, it says hot L1, neutral L2, which means it sounds like it's going to be a transference of power. So it's, it's adaptable. So it sounds like you can either do 110 or 220, which I think now it's like 120 or 240, depending on where you live, how much your voltage draw is for the actual neighborhoods. Uh, but yeah, so what I'm going to do here, since this pump is on a 220 outlet, I'm going to go my black and my red are going to go right into the hots of the pump. And then my ground is going to be grounded. But however, watertight conduit fitting, okay? This is half inch and it's going to thread right in here at the bottom. So what I'm going to do first, take all this off, put that off to the side. I want to actually put my conduit connector on the other side as well. Fun fact, this is completely aluminum, you guys. So it's weatherproof, which is pretty sweet. So I'm gonna put my conduit connector in here. This is a liquid tight conduit connector. Again, we wanna keep the elements out of the electricity. So we wanna make sure all this is all good to go. Unthread that guy. So now what I'm gonna to wanna to do is rough it in there like that. So now in order to cut, they do, however, if you guys need a longer run, they give you an electrical J box to kind of put right here. So you guys can run here to here, put some wire nuts in here and run it to however far. I think uh, electrical code says up to six feet. So please try to keep this within six feet for a conduit connector. Um, they also give you another one of these that goes inside of here, which I should have used, but I didn't. <laughs> they also give you a little guy of the liquid tight conduit, but however, the, my little run's not gonna make it. Um, they give you a cover plate for that electrical J box, and they give you all the hoses and other stuff, good fun connector stuff that we'll get to in a little bit. So first things first, what I wanna do is run my wires through here. All right, so I'm gonna thread this up here like this, tighten it up there. Now, where did my little connector go? You see Kyle? I got you. Oh, you're the best. Thread this on this side, very important so you don't forget. Put these in here. Again, I feel very confident in doing this because I turned the power off in the beginning, as you saw. So I'm gonna thread these guys in there. <clears throat> Tighten this thing up. Again, we want all of this nice and watertight. So now what I got, you see here, I got my hots. And then this one actually has a ground bus which I'll have to tie into, um, which is no big deal. So what we'll do now is I'm gonna strip back the wires. Again, it keeps my labels on here. I'm gonna take my labels off because I know what's what. Green is ground, okay? If you guys are doing this to 110, your black is gonna be your neutral wire, okay? So now I'm gonna trim these up, get some fresh metal exposed on these things so I can wire nut them. Kyle, would you mind going to cut me uh, 12 inches of a green wire? All right, so undo my wire nuts. So I have two legs here. That's what 240 is. 120 plus 120 is 240. So that's what we got. Wire nuts. I like to use new ones after every time I take these off. I like fresh connections and so should you. So I'm gonna turn my wires. My first guy is gonna go right in here with these. We'll wire nut it together. So my red is gonna go in one of the hots of this pool pump. And my black 
is going to go into another hot of the pool pump. Okay, so now I need to take off the bus because there's only two wires allowed in this bus, so I'm going to create a junction spot. So here's an old ground. And then Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. So I'm going to add a new little ground wire to my bus. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, cut this, trip it. All right, so we got our wires all connected. We have our grounds connected to our grounds. We have our 220 connected to the existing uh, pool pump because that's 220. So now I'm gonna put it back in this J box, close it up. And now we have successfully put our power in. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna connect this uh, cable up here because that's what's gonna actually power up this side. Looks directional. Let me see here. Gotta stand. Oh, yeah, it's just like that. So, pops down, and then this thing tightens. Cool. Yep. So, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna connect my blue tubing from here to the device, and we're literally in the home steps, guys. And then I'm gonna show you guys how to turn it on and adjust the flow so we get um, some sweet power. So, let's do this. So, this thing looks like it has a check valve. It's got a check valve. So we have a check valve, which means there's an error on check valve, a flow. So my check valve is going to sit right here next to the unit, guys. So I'm going to put my blue tubing on here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come all the way over to the unit over here. Can Mr. Cameraman change your camera angle? So I ran my tubing all the way around to my device. So you're gonna want me to plug this in right now, but I'm gonna tell you no, because what I'm gonna do, and you, it's just gonna be fast forward real quick, I'm gonna zip tie my tubing all the way here to make it a clean installation, so. All right guys, so I zip tied everything, so now I've only got this little bit hanging off here. So what I wanna do is leave myself just a tad room so I know where to cut, so I'm gonna cut right there. Because I'm a very big fan of cleaner installations. I don't like extra tubes hanging around where rats or whatever can chew through it. Put it on there. Sweet. What do you say we go fire up these breakers again, and then we turn the system on, and we show you how the flow meter works, then we're done. All right, guys, as discussed. So we're coming back over here. I know how to open this panel. This electrical panel. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the system back on after I turned it off earlier. So filter pump and the pool light GFI. So I turned everything off earlier because I didn't want to get shocked just in case. Close this, lock it up, and we're good. All right, guys, so I'm going to put the flow meter on. So I'm going to attach it here. Right it on there. Perfect. Put this here, so I have a nice straight path. So now what I'm going to do is see I'm not getting any flow here because that valve is wide open down there. So I'm going to start closing that valve and then you're going to start seeing some stuff happen over here. So go ahead. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to slowly turn this valve to allow water to come up through here to the venturi. Now let's go over here, see if that works. All right guys, so what you want to do is attach the filter on the back of here, and then what we're going to do is adjust that valve over there. So now we adjust the valve over there. Um, it's going to start bouncing in between. That lets you know that you have some flow. What you want to do is open this up completely when you open up the valve over there. And then once it starts bouncing a little bit, you can actually dial it in between 2 and 10. So you want to be somewhere around the 5 mark. Um, it's a little bit less gas in the, or like obviously bubbles in the pool when you're at the 5 mark. But you can open this thing back up to go to 8 if you want to really oxidize that water. Um, so yeah, I mean ultimately we are rocking and rolling and as you can see here, we have a green light. That means we are working efficiently, you guys. So, um, what we're gonna do is Kyle's gonna back at the green screen and kind of explain what the three level lights are, what the light is over here. 
All right, so we're gonna go into some quick tips for you guys on Clear Comfort's AOP system. Um, in the first part of the video, we're gonna talk about the lighting system that Clear Comfort has provided on their actual panels themselves. So for those of you guys that are not familiar, obviously orange panel is your power center. As you guys can see, it's got the nice pretty power cables here. And then you have your cartridge system in the blue side. So I'm gonna actually do some voodoo magic here. We're gonna have our web guy, Danny, he's gonna be awesome and turn these lights colors for you guys. As you can tell, I don't have anything plugged in. So once you actually have power plugged into the system and the blue cartridge is actually connected, it's going to always display a white light right here. So that's gonna be a white light. And then when you're looking at the actual orange system, we're gonna go through a series of three different lights. So just like a stoplight, we're gonna start here at the bottom and work our way up to the top. So green is going to happen when everything in the system is actually operational, everything's going well, it's going to stay on. Not a problem at all, that's what you're gonna focus on. Green is good. When you are running low or the system is detecting the cartridge is at its, uh, at its lifespan, it's going to turn yellow. So when this actually turns yellow, that is roughly about 90 days before you are fully required to um, replace the cartridge as the system is just going to stop producing the hydroxyls, which is going to eliminate your sanitation. So to make sure that you guys actually stay on top of it, the minute that you guys actually see this yellow light turn on, within the next few weeks of that, you guys need to make sure that you start the process for your exchange cartridge. So then that way you don't run into the issue of it actually going fully red on you. Um, you have about roughly 90 days once you have the yellow light on obviously 90 days and in this industry this year um, it can happen with a lot of back orders issues so just be sure that the minute you see this yellow light turn on that you actually start the process of getting an exchange and then of course this top light is going to be red so the red light triggers and that means that the system is no longer producing or operating the way that it should um, it will last roughly about 30 days even on a red so that way that will give you like one final last ditch effort to make sure that you guys can get this cartridge replaced. But once you see red, it's basically telling you big problems, figure it out. Um, as you guys can tell right here on the bottom, if you want replacements, you can go directly to clearcomfort.com and they also put their phone number on here for you guys. So just a quick tip on the lights for you guys. So well, now we're gonna move on to the actual flow meter of the uh, video. So the flow meter, which you guys saw Jacob install in our installation video, is a very crucial part to the actual functionality to make sure that the system is working. The old manifolds, which if you have one, you may have an older manifold, they were using a three-way valve. The newer ones, they've actually updated these and they've became a ball valve. So it's a little bit easier for you guys to realize which way the valve is open the last thing you guys want to do is have this thing be completely closed off like this and you blow your cartridge up so one thing that you're looking at is the directional arrows on the manifold themselves to let you guys know which way the water is actually going to flow so you always want to make sure that you start off first things first is make sure that the thing's facing up so then that way it is fully open so when you're setting your flow meter you're going to want to make sure first thing you do come to this three-way open it up completely then the next thing you're gonna do from there is once you've opened it you'll and you have your flow meter installed on the bottom of the blue cartridge, you'll start to see the ball bounce up and down like crazy. As long as the ball is moving, you know that you guys have this open and it's trying to detect, um, it's trying to specifically detect that, that flow. So the next thing you're gonna do is from there, let me open this up so I can show you guys a little bit more clearly. And one key thing that you always wanna make sure is that when you do install this flow meter, that you do install, uh, it kinda of looks like a little bit of a rifle muzzle brake here on the back end. It's like an air filter that goes on the back end of this flow meter. That is going to help uh, reduce some of the airflow so that it helps this uh, steel ball inside actually operate correctly. The optimal flow that you're looking for is between five and seven. So there's not an actual number on here for five and obviously there's not an actual number for seven. So you're shooting between um, four and eight, obviously trying to make sure that you're getting that ball to maintain. So once you guys have this fully open, the next steps is coming over here and starting to fine tune the actual flow meter in the front. So you're gonna, you're gonna have this fully open as well and then you're gonna slowly kind of crank it and at the same time, you may need to adjust 
your three-way valve at the equipment just to make sure that you can get that perfect fine um, five to seven in there with the with the ball valve inside the flow meter itself. So you'll see it in the video. Jacob does a really great job at uh, actually getting it to level out specifically right around um, six. So you got it right in between five and seven, but it does take some uh, fine tuning. So first thing you always just want to make sure is make sure that you have that ball valve or your three-way valve completely open before you guys start this process. Because if you don't, it's going to create a serious back pressure issue and you could blow up your filter. So definitely, definitely pay attention to that first. But just wanted to run you guys through those good quick tips. So uh, I appreciate you guys watching and I'm Kyle from e Pool Supply. We'll see you next time. Pretty awesome system. And we're excited to see what this pool can do with virtually little un poquito chlorine inside of this water. So again, I'm Jacob. Kyle's behind me dying of sweat. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Uh, again, check us out on ePoolSupply.com. Thanks, guys.